and it's time for the full review of the Skechers Razor 3. I've been running in this shoe for over a month now, and I always put 50 miles into a shoe before giving a full review, and I always never ever watch another YouTube video about a shoe before I give a full review because I want to give you my unfiltered gut reaction to a running shoe, okay? Let's start with a few specs real quick. 23 millimeter stack height in the heel, 19 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So it's a four millimeter drop. My sizing is seven and a half and it's weighing in at 5.8 ounces. This is lighter than the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knit. Very interesting. Uh, a lot of people are advertising the shoe at about 6.1, 6.2 ounces uh, at a bigger size. And on the topic of weight, I will just put this out there right now. Yesterday, I did 22 miles in this shoe. My RPM, and what is RPM? So my cadence, how many times are my feet striking the ground over a minute time? I had, I think, one of the higher RPMs that I've ever tracked on Strava. It was 185. That was exciting, and it was in this shoe. So my RPM was was high. Anyway, I just want to put that out there right now for all of you considering this shoe for half marathons, for marathons. My cadence was solid yesterday. Okay, moving on to the upper. It is an engineered mesh upper. I had big issues with this shoe when I opened it and it came out of the box. As you'll notice, there's a big crease across the toe box and I could really feel this crease the first two or three times that I wore the shoe. I will just say an update on the upper, it's feeling better. In fact, I really don't even notice this crease at all. I will say Skechers, if you're listening, try to get rid of that crease through the upper, through the toe box. It's like, I think it comes down to the quality of the engineered mesh. And also it seems like there's too much material being used through the toe box. And anyway, that is one of my biggest concerns I would say of this shoe is this engineered mesh. It just feels a little uh, cheap. I, there's no other way to say it. It feels a little cheap like you cut some corners through the upper. So I'm hoping maybe with the Razor 4 that the upper is really improved. And so for the midsole, Skechers, I think you're moving in the right direction. I don't think you're there yet as far as responsiveness and energy return through your, through your stride and through your cadence. Um, but you did nail the weight. It is very lightweight through the, like it doesn't feel heavy at all. And I really appreciate that. I'm just wondering what your next step is gonna be for returning energy, especially for a marathon distance. Like I still am in the camp that this shoe is perfect for the half marathon, not as much for the marathon. I'm just not, I don't feel like, I feel like the last six miles of a marathon you're going to be wishing you had a little more help and a little more spring and return of energy those last six miles of a marathon. Moving on to the outsole, you've got this, uh, it's, it's definitely a road shoe. I took it out for 22 miles yesterday. It was all on dirt and it's, and listen, I just wanted to, it was the best option available for me yesterday and I could feel the rocks through the through this very thick midsole, I could still feel the rocks on this dirt road. So that was a lesson learned. So definitely a road shoe. I am beginning to notice only after 50 miles that the rubber, this black rubber on the outsole is wearing down just a little bit. So that's a little concerning as far as durability concern is concerned, considering that I've only put 50 miles into the shoe. And the only other thought about the outsole is that it is a wide, uh, footprint. It's a wide landing area. So I don't feel unstable in this shoe at all. Like I feel very in control and I don't feel like I'm going to roll my ankle or unstable at all. So that's a good thing. As far as fit is concerned, true to size on fit, no issues with going with my, my normal sizing on the fit. And I did forget one to mention one thing, very breathable almost too breathable in the winter, meaning your feet are getting a little too cold. If you live in a hot and humid uh, climate, money, like your feet are gonna be nice and taken care of. You're not gonna overheat uh, in this shoe. Definitely very breathable through the upper. And now this shoe is a racing shoe, but I'm using it more so in 2019 for training. 
Again, I think there's some better options out there for better energy return for racing. But for training, money shot. Like middle distance runs, 10 to 15 miles, even though I took it to 22 yesterday, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna stick to my guns that it's a 15 mile shoe. But listen, $130, Skechers, thank I don't even know what to say. For a potential racer for the marathon distance, $130, Skechers, thank you for creating a shoe at a decent price point, okay? Is it my favorite shoe? No. But for $130, you are winning the value proposition to all of us runners out there. And hopefully, Skechers, your price point is gonna bring the price down for other companies out there. It might take five years, it might take 10 years, but $130 for a potential half marathon and marathon racing shoe, that's what I'm talking about. So kudos to you for a great, great price point. And so here's the kicker, this shoe can be used for training and for racing. $130, keyword has to be value. So again, Skechers, kudos to you. And that question of the day, what is your opinion on Skechers running shoes? Frankly, I never thought I'd be running in a Skecher running shoe, but I'm beholden to no one. I'm open to trying new opportunities in the running shoe world. So I'd be very curious to hear what is your, even if you've never run in Skechers ever, I still would be interested to hear what is your outsider perspective on Skechers. And if you have trained or raced in Skechers, that like you, this is your time to shine down in the comments and give us your thoughts on the overall Skechers running shoe lineup. So would I recommend this shoe? At $130, I would. I actually would. At $150, no way. $130, yes, okay? Because of that crossover, you can use it for training and for racing. Capiche? Oh man, so not too shabby, not too shabby. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thank you for watching video number two on the Skechers Razor 3 full review. Woo!